I'm struggling so hard. Who I need an Iron Man suit. Give me just a suit of armor so that I can do this. Iron Man. Allison, I'm going crazy. Planet one up. Hey everyone, I am Nate and welcome back to Planet One Up. In this video, I'm gonna be seeing how many Iron Man facts I can get through in eight minutes, starting from no. Iron Man owns Area 51. He bought it from the government, confirmed in Avengers number 19. Iron Man was created by Stan Lee, developed by scripter Larry Labiba. <laughs> Labia? Labiba. And designed by artists Don Heck and Jack Kirby. Tom Cruise was considered for the role of Iron Man in the movies. He turned it down because he wasn't happy with the script. Oh, <laughs> yikes. He must be kicking himself. Jarvis is different in the comics to the to the movies. In the Marvel comic universe, Marvel's Marvel Com cinematic universe, Jarvis is the Avengers loyal butler. In the Iron Man films, Jarvis is the name of a Star Stark's AI system that assists him in the superheroing. Yep. <laughs> the decision was made to make him an AI to avoid comparisons to Bruce Wayne's butler Alfred Pennyworth from DC's Batman. Jarvis is an acronym that stands for just a rather very intelligent system. Tony Stark designed the Iron Man suit with a urine reclamation function, meaning he can pee inside the suit without a worry. He just goes, dingle, dingle, dingle. I don't know why that made that sound. Despite the name Iron Man, uh, the early versions of the armor were actually made out of gold titanium alloy. Iron Man made his first appearance in the Tales of Suspense issue 39 in March 1963. He had his first standalone issue in 1968. Um, oh, so five years. In Iron Man 3, Tony built a suit that could fly at five times the speed of sound. This shoot, the suit was nicknamed Shotgun, referencing the loud sound made by the suit as it broke the sound barrier. Tony Stark can lift up to 100 tons of weight using the Iron Man suit. The Hulkbuster suit that Stark created, uh, that Stark created was for dealing with the Hulk and can lift up 175 tons. Tony Stark has built 50 versions of the Iron Man suit. Tony's newest suit prototype uses nanotechnology. The nanobots enable the suit to adapt to the requirements of the battle and morph into different forms according to Tony's needs. He used it in the battle against Thanos. In the early films, advanced robotic technology assisted Tony with the putting on and taking off of the Iron Man suit. In Iron Man 3, he came up with a way to speed up the process by, by creating armor he could control with his mind. Utilizing implants beneath the skin, these versions of the suit can be summoned from afar, assembling on his body in pieces like magic. Uh, at, times of the first, at the time of the first Iron Man film release, Robbie Downey Jr. was a controversial figure, and the studio reportedly needed convincing that he would fit the role of Tony Stark. Can you imagine anyone else uh, doing the role? I, I cannot. Sam Rockwell was in the running to play Tony Stark as a backup. He ended up coming back in Iron Man 2 to play Justin Hammer. Hammer. Iron Man's original villain in the first film was going to be the Mandarin. Iron Man and Iron Man 2 were directed by John uh, Ferrura, who also played the character Happy in the films, who also made an excellent movie, uh, TV show on Netflix called Chef. I recommend it. The MCU has a long-running relationship with car makers Audi that all started back with Iron Man 1. Iron Man's car in the first film is an Audi R6. Um, uh, his car was supposed to feature heavily in the film Cinematic Battle, but was written out because the car was too good. Cool. In the original plans, Tony Stark was supposed to crash his Audi R8 into Iron Monger's legs in the final battle, which would flip the car before Iron Man split the car in half to jump out. Unfortunately, the R8 was too good, refusing to flip no matter what they tried, and the roof simply wouldn't split as intended. Quentin, uh, Quentin Tarantino almost directed the Iron Man film in 1999. The film was set to be made from a script co-written by Stan Lee and Jeff Vinter, which featured Modoc as the villain and then rewritten by Jeffrey Kane. After that, while the rights were still with Fox, Tarantino was approached to write and direct, but Fox soon after decided they already had too many Marvel superheroes in development. Hey. Uh, uh, Paul uh, Bettany, the voice actor for Jarvis, took the role as a favor to John Ferreira, Favreau, oh my god, who worked on, uh, who worked with him on Wimbledon. It took him a total of two hours to record all of his AI lines, and he claimed he had no idea what the film was even going to be at the time. He had no idea. He also went to play Vision in the MCU. Robert Downey Jr. was initially going to be paid only $500,000 for his role as Tony Stark in the first Iron Man film back in 2008. His pay by the end of the film's development ended up being $2.5 million with add-ons based on performance. He was paid $50 million for the first Avengers film. Look at that, look at that jump up. Nice little jump up, nice little pocket. 
uh, pocket change. The script for Iron Man wasn't even completed when they went into production and as, and as such led to a lot of improvisation and workshopping for scenes on the day of filming. According to Jeff Briggs, who played uh, Obadar Stane in the film, he wasn't ideal. it wasn't ideal having neither a completed script or rehearsals as it clashed with his usual preparation. He did enjoy the experience of basically filming a $200 million student film. <laughs> what a slap. The iconic Iron Man reveal scene at the end of the first film where Tony Stark admits, I am Iron Man, wasn't in the original version. Robbie Jan Jr. went off script during the film and blurted out this sexy little line. His surprise, uh, this surprise producer, Kevin Feige, uh, but he liked it so much that he ended up keeping it for the final version of the film. There was a version of the film script in which Howard Stark, Tony's father, was going to be Iron Monger. During the film of Iron Man, a paparazzi snuck into the set and took a photo of the Iron Man armor while hiding in some bushes. He leaked it on the internet, but instead of making it disappear, Marvel actually used the photo themselves in the film. The image appears on the front cover of the newspaper Tony Stark is reading right at the end of the film before the cinematic press conference. Robbie Downey Jr. showed up to his screen testing for Iron Man wearing a tuxedo. The scene in Iron Man featuring Nick Fury was deliberately placed after the credits to downplay expectations over what may or may not come next, as the studio was still unsure whether the film would be successful or not. Iron Man was meant to be a superhero that everyone would hate. He said, I thought it would be fun to take the kind of character that no one would like. None of our, none of our, none of our readers would like it and shove him down their throats and then make them like him. And he became very popular. In, uh, in the Earth 3490 universe, Tony Stark is born a woman, Natasha Stark. She becomes a heroine known as Iron Woman. In the universe, the Civil War never happens because Iron Woman and Captain America are dating and they even get married. Since Iron Man has been around for decades, the location of his origin story has changed several times to stay relevant. In the comics, Stark originally built the suit in Vietnam, but this was then later retconned so that he built it in the Gulf War before Afghanistan was finally set upon for the movie. Tony Stark is super smart. He uh, entered MIT at the age of 15 and graduated two years later with a master's degree in chemical engineering. Iron Man has been part of not only the original Avengers team, but also the West Coast Avengers, New Avengers, Mighty Avengers, and Force Works. For a period of time, Iron Man's armor had a nose. That is so weird. It looked ridiculous. The story behind it is that Stan Lee, upon seeing an Iron Man cover, made an offhand comment saying, hey, where's the nose? Meaning that he thought the helmet looked as if it was too tight on Tony's face for the nose to fit. However, this comment was misinterpreted by the, the meaning that he wanted a nose on the armor, so they added it. Luckily, they re realized how ridiculous it looked and removed it. Marvel is filled with convoluted and weird storylines that often get retconned. One such storyline was The Crossing. Tony Stark is somewhat mind controlled by Kang the Conqueror, resulting in him becoming a bad guy. In response to Iron Man becoming a traitor to the Avengers, the team goes back in time and picks up 19 year old version of Tony to help him defeat the evil adult one. The older Stark ultimately makes a heroic self-sacrifice, allowing teen Tony to remain in the present, becoming Iron Man, until the subs subsequent onslaught incident where a great many heroes seemingly die. Instead, Franklin Richards saves the heroes and recreates the adult Tony on his counter-Earth, thereby making the crossover more or less absolutely irrelevant. Oh my god, that's it. We got to, that was fact 57. There was so much. There was so much more. What did you think of this list? If you were like, oh man, I can't even do the outro. I'm struggling so hard. Who, I need an Iron Man suit. Give me just a suit of armor so that I can do this. Iron Man. Allison, I'm going crazy. That is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you like as well as subscribe and hit the bell icon just down here. What did you think of all the facts? Did you know them? Were some of them catching you off guard? Let us know in the comments section down below. I am Nate, this is Planet One Up, and we'll see you all next time. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out these as well as head on over to the channel to subscribe and follow us on Instagram. Just go now. Go do it. Net, please. I'd really like you to.